Well, hello everybody, welcome back. I'm really glad that you can join me again. And I'm proud to say that this week's episode is sponsored by Babbel. And for those of you that don't know, Babbel is one of the world's leading language learning apps and I've been learning Italian with them for about the last year. Now, as autumn is upon us, and in fact it's already here, despite me sitting in the glorious sunshine, autumn is a brilliant time of year to learn a new skill or pick up on a new thing that you wanted to try. It's the perfect time as you'll be in the house. Weather's a bit more cold, great time to hunker down and learn something new. So I thought that this would be a great opportunity to share this with you. So as you might have figured out, I am in Italy at the moment visiting friends. And one of the reasons why I wanted to learn Italian was because I knew I'd be spending more time here. It's one of my favorite places. Have you ever visited somewhere and you don't speak the language? You kind of feel a little bit awkward, a little bit out of place, like you're not really trying. So one of the reasons why I wanted to learn Italian was to make myself feel a bit more relaxed and just to show a bit of politeness to the Italians here so that I can go to a restaurant and just do the, even the simplest thing like order a coffee. Now in the past I have tried to learn other languages and I haven't really stuck to it but there just seems to be something a little bit different about Babbel. I think it's the app. It's really, the integration is excellent. It makes you want to learn. And I've just found that I spend a few minutes in the morning and then when I have a little break throughout the day, I'll hop on to the app and learn my Italian and it's been a great way for me to really improve my skill and my language. So it just seems to work very well. Now, Babbel has a number of subscriptions for you to choose from and in particular one of the most interesting I think is the lifetime subscription. I'm delighted to let you know that I can offer you up to 60% off a subscription with Babbel. All you need to do is check the description box below and the QR code to get your 60% off a Babbel subscription. Grazie, signor Rossi. Grazie, signor Rossi. Sì, si, grazie. Sì, si, grazie. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, eh, due cappuccine e acqua frizzante, per favore. Grazie. Welcome to the kitchen in this beautiful Italian house. And this is such a stylish kitchen. The first time I saw it, I was just in awe. It's kind of like a proper chef's kitchen, but with a little bit of a Italian Milano style. I just really love this kitchen. So we're just back from the market. We've picked up some beautiful ingredients and I'm just gonna share with you how I make a really delicious, fresh Italian basil pesto. Basil pesto, in fact, all pestos are one of my favorite things. They just, they're so nice to make, really easy to make, and you can store them in the fridge and they go with so many different things. So we're gonna have them with crostini tonight with our dinner. And just look at this gorgeous Italian basil. And I wish that you could smell how fresh this is. If you could put this into a candle or a scent, it would just fly off the shelves. It is so fragrant and beautiful. The most gorgeous green leaves. So yes, that is the joy of being here in Italy. Going to a beautiful market, going for a little walk, having your little coffee. You can get these fresh, gorgeous ingredients and then come back to the house and make beautiful food. It really does make cooking and making things in the home such a joy. It's one of the things that I really love the most about being here, the passion for food. 
is so evident and it really encourages you to enjoy it more too and see food as a real pleasure which of course is what it is. So to make this basil pesto, we have just a few ingredients. This is very simple. The basil, of course, gorgeous. Then we've got some extra virgin olive oil. This is one of the most beautiful olive oils I've ever tried. It's just heavenly, beautiful to dip bread in. We've got some pine nuts, as well as two cloves of garlic. Got some Parmesan cheese, of course and then some sea salt. And what we're gonna do is just put it all into the blender and blend it up until it's vibrant and green, and then it is ready, it's that simple. Now, if you would like a little tip about how to get your pesto extra green so it looks just like the Italians make, what you need to do is make sure that the pesto is really, really cold. So the best way to do that is to soak this in ice water, just get a few cubes of ice, put them into a bowl, and then soak the basil in there for about 10 minutes. And what you can also do, I'm using a handheld uh, blender today, but if you've got a food processor, just take the blades out of the food, food processor and put them into the fridge for about 10 to 20 minutes and let them get really, really cold. The colder that you can get the basil and the blades, the more green and vibrant your pesto is gonna look. And let's be honest, it really does make a difference to the overall appeal when it looks bright green and fresh. I personally am not going to be doing that today because I don't have the patience to wait. I'm too excited to eat. I just feel like when I come to Italy, I can indulge in food and really enjoy it more than ever before. So this whole time I've been here has mainly been re revolved around eating and having beautiful drinks. So I'm gonna start making this pesto, it's very easy. Well, I really do hope that you enjoyed that little taste of Italy. Uh, I know that it's autumn now, but it was so wonderful to be able to escape just for a short time for a little bit of sunshine. The weather was absolutely perfect, like 25 to 27 degrees at the most. You could walk around without breaking a sweat, but it was warm. You could sit outside, have a nice glass of wine, eat some food. So as we're just Ending our summer here in the UK, it was nice to be able to have one last little party of summer and enjoy the warm weather for a few days. So it was great to be back. So it was really nice to be able to visit the Bologna region. I've never really explored that area before, so it was something new for me. And as with most areas in Italy, it was beautiful, especially being able to travel just a few hours in the car and go to Lake Garda as well, which was somewhere that I've never been. I've been to Como, but I'd never been to Garda, so it was great to be able to visit there. And it's so different from Como, totally different vibe, but again, just perfect. I really, really enjoyed it. And I hope that you can see from the videos how wonderful it really is there. So now to the topic that I think everybody is most interested in. And this has been a topic that I've talked about for most of this year. In fact, I think I did mention moving to Italy at the very, very beginning of this year when I was talking about my goals and plans. So I can say that I've spent a very long time thinking about this decision, making sure that I've explored all avenues, options, thought about the pros and cons of moving to a new country, exploring different areas, trying to imagine my life there, I think that I've given it a real deal of thought. Usually I tend to make quick 
spur of the moment decisions, thinking that, you know, it's just life, things will always work out. But this had to be something that I considered quite carefully. It's not just me who would be moving to Italy. I would have to take Sophie with me. She's old now, she's 11 years old. So taking a dog to Italy would be quite stressful for her. I have to think about how many years she's going to be here as well and if she's able to live there comfortably. So I've really taken a lot into consideration when making my decision. I've also had a lot of advice from you, my friends and audience. Uh, every time that I've mentioned this, I've looked at the comments and there are quite a lot of people who have said do it and then quite a lot of people who said don't do it. And I've really, I really have honestly, genuinely looked at your comments and considered every single opinion that was given to me because I find it very valuable and important. Uh, I like to get a lot of advice from everyone and I really do appreciate input. So if you have offered your thoughts on a move to Italy, I appreciate it very much and it is definitely being part of my decision-making process. So, I have decided that I am not going to be moving to Italy. This may not be a surprise to many of you. I've seen in the last few months that people have commented saying, oh, I don't think you're going to end up moving there. Uh, for this reason, for that reason, uh, what's going on. So I think it was becoming obvious that I was enjoying my life here in Edinburgh, that Italy wasn't going to be the right decision for me at this point in my life. Uh, I'm enjoying living here, I enjoy my life, and even though I do love Italy to visit, what I've realised after visiting there quite a lot this year is that it probably isn't a great place for me to live at this point in my life. Number one, I would be living alone. And when you're living in a new place, trying to settle in, it could be quite lonely. The areas that I wanted to live, i.e. in the countryside, even though they are beautiful and you see channels like Kylie Flavel, who live the most wonderful life there, as a person who'd be living by themselves, not knowing Italian or knowing anybody else, it would be a lot different to the dream that you see on YouTube or other social media platforms. Something that a lot of people commented on who actually are Italian or who live in Italy was that they thought that it wouldn't be the best idea for me to move there. Uh, lots of political reasons which I don't want to go into, I never really go into politics on this channel, but just that the reality of living in Italy is a lot different to holidaying there. And I think after visiting there, that would probably be the case. So Vanessa, my friend, moved to Italy in the summertime. She is living in the countryside. She's faced the challenges that I would have to face. She speaks a little bit of Italian and she's there with her fiancé. So it's been difficult for them moving there as a couple who speak a little bit of Italian and who have got a nice home. So for someone like me, who'd be by myself, who doesn't speak a word of Italian, apart from the Italian, obviously, that I've been learning with Babbel, uh, it would be very, very difficult for me to live there on my own. So I have decided that I am going to enjoy visiting Italy, visiting my friends there, going there on holiday. But at this point in my life, it wouldn't really be the best decision for me and my future. So that has been laid to rest. I'm quite happy and content with my decision. So I just wanted to be clear and upfront because this is something that a lot of people have asked me about a lot and I don't want to mislead or continue this storyline if it isn't going to be happening for me now. So yeah, Italy is wonderful. It's still probably my favourite place in the world to go on holiday, but I'm very happy living here in Edinburgh. So I hope that you will continue to enjoy seeing this channel from Edinburgh. I'm going to be staying here for a while and I'm just very, very excited to, now that I've made the decision to stay, to really fully embrace my home and living here. I think what has happened is because I've been unsure about my decision and whether I'll be staying here, I haven't really planted myself in this house and enjoyed it as my home. And what I've realised since I made the decision to stay is that I'm really enjoying my house more than ever before. It feels cosy, I feel like I want to pour all the love that I have into it and really enjoy being here. So I think that is a great positive thing that I'm actually feeling like this is my home and that I want to plant down roots here for a short time yet. So I'm definitely going to be here for a few more years.
But yes, I just want to thank everyone who watches and supports. Your support in this decision uh, has been wonderful. Couldn't have done it without you, truly. I really do appreciate every one of you who've guided me and led me through this decision. And I'm thankful that you, I know you'll be here to support me in the decision now that I've made it too. So I am looking forward to getting on, continuing and enjoying my life here in Edinburgh. So thank you for always being there. It really means a lot. And yes, let's have a wonderful time this autumn, enjoying my home. I'm really going to try to bring you lots of new, interesting content. I'm feeling excited about the future. And yes, Edinburgh is home. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Don't forget that if you do want to try out a Babbel subscription, to check the link in the description box and you can get up to 60% off your subscription. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, take care. Bye-bye.